things are really getting out of hand in Kenya. Folks, things are not good. Now, there's an area which has been peaceful for many decades, and many of you who know Nairobi and the suburbs well will know it, where recent events have caused a lot of panic amongst Kenyans. Now, of course, I'm talking about the Kawangware area, okay? Now, the worst hit area of the Kawangware is the area called 56. Now, there might be a bit of confusion here, so let me clear it up. Kawangware basically is two areas. There are two Kawangwares. There's what we call Kawangware 46, according to the Matatu roots, and Kawangware 56. Now, Kawangware 56 is a slum area that is directly neighbor to Plash, Leafy, Lovington. Okay? Kangwari 46 leads up from uh, Gong Road to Naivasha Road. I think you can now see a map in front of your screens. Read leads from uh, Gong Road uh, up to Dagoreti Corner and then you go on to Naivasha Road. Yeah, As you go up Naivasha Road, on your right, that would be Kangwari 46. Okay? Kangwari 56, you reach by coming up from Valley Arcade, those who know the area. You go up along Gitanga Road. Okay? And now, uh, instead of going straight on to Gitanga Road till the end, you turn right. So the right side of Gitanga Road is Kangware 56, and the left side is Kangware 46. Okay, so that we've made that clear. Now the main problem is in the 56 area. The area, as you can see from your, uh, from your, from your map, neighboring Lovington, James Gishuru Road, uh, Convent uh, Road, and so on and so forth. Now I'll come, I'll come back to that point in a minute, uh, why it is so significant where this area of this trouble uh, spot area is there. Yeah? Now uh, it's very interesting to note, you know, there's one thing which is very clear. All the trouble, all the violence in Kenya so far has involved government provocation. And that is a fact. Now this is in sharp contrast to 2007 when troubles broke out, you know, without any police intervention, without any uh, police killing anybody, yeah, what happened is that, you know, the, there were tribal tensions, tribe against tribe, and that's how the 2007 clashes uh, broke out. Now, in sharp contrast, 2017, so far, all the troubles have been provoked by police. Now, let me just uh, elaborate that so that we understand what I'm saying. In Nyanza, immediately after the uh, August 8th elections, we had reports of police breaking into people's houses, yeah, uh, beating up people, shooting people, etc., etc. The famous, infamous case of Baby Pendo, yeah, she was one of the victims when police actually broke into a house. Madare, uh, there was a kid who was shot playing in the balcony of her house, okay, Stephanie Mora, yes, that again. Uh, the death was directly as a result of force used by the security forces. Yeah, obviously uh, Stephanie Mora was not a demonstrator because she was playing outside the house. Yeah, again the government was very deeply involved. Now, th again the recent uh, problems in Nyanza have been caused by police. Again, immediately police go there, we hear of problems. When there's no police presence there, it is peaceful. Okay, that should be very clear up to now. Okay? Because I want you to get a certain trend so that we all understand what is going on. Because it gets very confusing when you hear reports, people being blamed, oh, this person did that, or this person has a militia. It all gets confusing. Because we're in a country, we're in, we're in a propaganda country. Yeah? A country that is operate, operates and is governed by propaganda. Okay, so let's just get that very clear. Now, according to multiple eyewitnesses, this is how the problem in Kaungwari 56 started. Okay? Uh, hundreds of people with dreadlocks arrived in Kongware. Yeah? And what they did is that they started going about attacking people by shouting, no peace. And they started slashing people. Some people were shot, etc., etc. Now, according to eyewitnesses, police were looking on. That is according to eyewitnesses on the spot. Multiple eyewitnesses. Now, if you ask local people, they'll tell you these are Mungiki people, okay? That is exactly what people on the ground are saying. Not Kumekucha, people on the ground. Now, most of the press have arrived on the ground when already the situation has really escalated. And so what's the story they get? 
the story that comes out is that there are two warring groups. But actually what is happening is that there's, there's the initial attackers, yeah, and then the youth in the area, the people in the area, have armed themselves to defend themselves. That is exactly what the position is. Now, um, you might find this a bit ridiculous because you might say, if I was living there, I wouldn't do that. But bear in mind, these are simple people, okay? They've got nowhere else to go. Most of this, these people have been born and brought up in Kongware, yeah? They, they're living on, believe it or not, ancestral land, yeah? Which they've inherited from their parents and so on and so forth, okay? And so they have nowhere to go. This is home for them, okay? So when they're attacked, they have got no other option but to defend themselves, okay? So they arm themselves with pangas, they arm themselves with what, and so on and so forth. Now, um, it is good that at least a section of uh, the police who have been um, sent to the area to try and quell the situation have been able to recognize this, okay? So uh, the group which is defending property has not been very successful because a lot of businesses have been set on fire, yeah, uh, homes have been attacked by these uh, Mugiki people. There are unconfirmed reports of rapes and so on and so forth. Now in terms of uh, communities, there are so many different uh, communities living in the area. The majority being the Luya, the Luo and the Kisi. Oh, and of course the Kikuyu. Okay? Now again, according to eyewitnesses, uh, most of the deadly roadblocks which have been set up by gangs yeah, have been asking people for their names. Yeah? You know when they pass the roadblocks, maybe somebody's coming from work or maybe somebody's trying to get somewhere. Uh, immediately you're confronted by these youths, they ask you for your name. Yeah? Now most people have been very wary so they give their first name, Isaac for instance. Yeah? But then they insist they want to know your second name. Now why would they want to know your second name? Well you've guessed it, so that they can know what tribe you are. So the long and short of it is that it would appear from the evidence collected on the ground that the first group which attacked the area, which set off all these uh, tensions, yeah, the objective was some sort of ethnic cleansing. Yes, to have outsiders outside the area. Now this may be very tricky because a lot of the people who have settled in the area and bought land and even inherited land from their parents do not all belong to one community. Yeah. Although the area is predominantly Kikuyu, there are a lot of other communities who live in the area called Kangware. And this population, population of uh, non-Kikuyus in the area or non-locals is extremely high because you have also got to consider that most of the locals have built houses, rental houses, these are just one room, one room houses, and they've rented them out. And they've rented them out to people from all over the country called Kenya. Now let's come back to the point I left off about Kangware 56 neighboring a high income estate. Yeah? Now in my view, this it is extremely dangerous and it, extremely worrying that this has, ha this has flared up so close to a high income area. Now you remember in an earlier recording, I had mentioned the fact that a lot of uh, the most upmarket places in Nairobi happen to neighbor slum areas, okay? And now this is one of those slum areas. And you remember also I had had said, this is a deadly time bomb. You know, the fact that uh, these slum areas neighbor high income areas. Now why do I say that? The divide in Kenya or the gap between the rich and the poor, or between the haves and the have-nots, yeah, has increasingly widened over the years. Okay? And there's a lot of... Um, bad feelings, yeah? There's a lot of uh, bitterness, yes? When it comes to low-income areas, and especially when they look at people who are doing well, living right next to them. You go into a supermarket in Nairobi, and here is somebody who maybe works as a watchman or something. He has come into the supermarket to buy a, a packet of maize flour. You know, Kenyans love that for Gali. He has come into the supermarket to buy a packet of maize flour, uh, because he has seen it in the newspaper somewhere that they're selling at the cheapest, it's being sold at a cheaper price than his local duka near his home. Yeah, the difference could even be maybe five shillings or a mere two shillings. Yeah, and they've come to uh, purchase maybe two or three bags uh, of maize flour. Yeah, uh, or packets rather, not bags. Now, as they line up at the counter, right next to them, in front of them, 
is somebody who has come to do some shopping yeah they usually, they would usually have a card or an mpesa yeah and their trolley is full brimming and flowing over yeah and uh, as as the amount is rung on the cash register it comes to something like 23000 24000 yeah now this person who's lining up buying three or four bags of flour looks at that amount and uh, it's not even their salary for six months if they worked for six months they would not even have that kind of money or maybe to be market four or five months okay so here is somebody spending uh, my salary for four months pop on a whim yes and uh, here I am buying one or two packets of unga you get my drift so this has brought a lot of resentment and uh, when you have the kind of troubles that we have flaring up in Kongware now my biggest concern is that these troubles could very very easily pour over into the estate peaceful you know uh, law-abiding citizens uh, next door yeah and that my fellow Kenyans would be a recipe for disaster now I've had some unconfirmed reports that the people behind this whole mess the people behind who have triggered all this uh, violence uh, did this very deliberately knowing the position of Kangwari 56 yeah the intention being exactly what my worst fears are of course these are unconfirmed reports but I don't even want to think of the consequences of something like that ever happening but as I make this recording tensions God just help Kenya as I make this recording uh, tensions are still very high in Kangwari extremely high uh, there's a bit of there's a lull you know there's a bit of peace but uh, the residents are very scared for their lives and you know I, I can imagine you know you just imagine for a minute yeah you're this poverty stricken Kenya you live in Kenyan you live in this one roomed uh, house somewhere in Kangwari you're there with your wife your family and your kids and this situation has erupted you don't have any extra money in your pocket in fact maybe you've been struggling to put food on the table Okay, as you know, as I said earlier, Kenyans have not been any, in any meaningful uh, commercial activity since August this year. Okay, so times are very hard for people. So you don't have any money on you, yeah. So you cannot relocate your family, you know, uh, just like that. And even, you know, if you relocated them, where would you go? You know, this is really terrible. Yeah, so I can imagine what these families are going through. Now, of course, I'm keeping a very close eye on this for you. Yeah, and I'll update you as I get new information and uh, as we see how the situation here develops. Okay, but what I can say, bottom line, this is not looking good at all. Yeah, until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.